Coming down the aisle, it's Wrestlepedia with your host, the savant of the squared circle, the Ray Man of Wrestling. It's Brody, the insane brain Herman. Welcome back to Wrestlepedia with Brody, the insane brain Herman, the savant of the squared circle. The Rain Man of Wrestling, Brody, it is great to have you back again. Yep, thank you. You know, for those of you who are just joining us for the first time, go ahead and subscribe to this podcast or to this channel. I think you're going to enjoy this. Brody is 18, and he literally is a savant when it comes to professional wrestling. He's been digesting every aspect of it since he was in diapers, and uh, he has an audiographic memory and a photographic memory. Yeah. So he has seen just about every match there is. He can remember them. He knows the wrestlers, the managers, the bookers, the promoters, the gimmicks, the moves, and everything in between. And so what we're doing on season one of this podcast is we're doing some ranking shows, some clever ranking shows that you may not see anywhere else. And then as we move into season two, we're going to get into a lot of different topics. And this is really a podcast for people who want to get into the weeds and uh, and and get into wrestling, you know, not just about what's happening this past week, but really putting everything into a deep historical yeah. context. So on this week's episode, we are going to rank, we're going to count down the top five uh, amateur wrestlers that turned into professional wrestlers. Amateur wrestlers who became professional wrestlers. Yes. And, and so uh, as you hear these, if you disagree, if you think we're leaving anybody out, uh, I want you to go ahead and put that in the comments or go ahead and send Brody an email. His email address is Brody, B-R-O-D-Y, at theinsanebrain.com. And I'm the man they simply refer to as the dad. Uh, currently sporting a Hulk Hogan mustache. And yes, this is specifically for this podcast. I don't want you to think I'm walking around with this all the time. Although, as I've told Brody on many occasions, yeah. I think I look more like Grandpa Joe. Yeah. From Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. Yeah. Look at me. Anyway, enough of that fun. Let's start. Let's get on this list. The number five best amateur who turned professional wrestler. And I want to start off by honorable mentions because most people don't realize a lot of amateur wrestlers turn to professional wrestling because they still got that fighting gene in their bone. And of course, ones that were great ones. I mean, Jake Hager Jack, slash Jack Swagger wrestled in Oklahoma and... Rick Steiner and Scott Steiner were, were a great tag team, great singles wrestlers, had a great career in Michigan. And Dr. Death, Steve Williams, wrestled at Oklahoma. He was great. Uh, Gorilla Monsoon. I mean, there's so many amateurs that were really, that became great professional wrestlers. Most of them tend to in somewhat. But these are five that really were not only professional wrestling champions, but were NWA wrestling champions that were guys that really set themselves apart. So let's let's start with number five. And I always do appreciate the honorable mentions. I know how difficult it is to pare a list down right. to top five, but I insist on a top five. I think top tens, it's too easy to include everybody, but a top five really forces you to make some tough calls. So yeah. give us number five on your list. Well, this guy is one of my, one of my father's favorite wrestlers, and almost everybody's you know favorite wrestlers, especially your WWE in the early in the late seventies and the early eighties, is is Bob Backlund. Uh, I mean, the reason Bob why Backlund. Bob Backlund, Vince Senior wanted Bob Backlund to be his champion. He was moving on from the Bruno San Martino era. He used the heel superstar Billy Graham to transition from. Bruno San Martino to Bob Backlund. He actually gave Billy Graham his winning date and his losing date when he won the title. So that's how much confidence he had in Backlund. But here's why. So amateur wrestling crew starts at North Dakota State. And at that time, the amateur wrestling prodigies in the early 70s were Ric Flair from Minnesota and Bob Backlund from North Dakota State. Well, the reason why Backlund is number five and not the Nature Boy is because Bob Backlund actually won a national championship title, the 191 weight class for North Dakota State, he was a football and wrestling All-American in a JUCO level at Waldor Waldorf College, and then he ended up going to North Dakota State, becoming a champion in wrestling at the 191 weight weight class. And Bob Backlund, from that, you know, he was so popular that you know Vince Senior felt the notion to make him his champion. So I was a very, and you're right, I was a very big Bob Backlund fan. He was the champion during the years that I was first introduced to yeah. professional wrestling. 1978 through 1983. Exactly. And that's, you know, I was born in 71. So from yeah. the ages of like 7 to 12, 
Uh, Bob Backlund was champion. And what I remember about Backlund was you felt like you were watching a real wrestler. And I guess that yeah. makes sense because of his background in college. He, he wasn't flashy. He didn't have a lot of gimmicks. Cut a great promo, uh, though. Yeah, he did. And he had a, a, a signature move in the chicken wing. Yeah. Uh, which uh, my friends and I would all try to do yeah. uh, with each other. And uh, I got uh, Jermaine Sullivan, if you're out there, uh, in second grade, got in trouble for putting me in the chicken wing. So uh, I feel like I've lived some of this experience. Yes. Um, but Bob Backlund, uh, he was not, he never wore like a mask. He was not a guy... Uh, I mean, he looked clean. He was. He wore navy. He wore champion. navy blue trunks, and he had that you know red hair. Whether it was and one of the longest running champions of all. Yeah, time. he was one of the longest running WWE champions of all time. He was charismatic. He was he was the guy that you wanted to be your champion, and he was a big face. I, I remember him losing to the Iron Sheik December twenty sixth of nineteen eighty three. Yeah. yeah, and then of course a month later, Hulk Hogan, Hogan would win it. Would take the championship right. in January of eighty four against yes. the Iron Sheik. So Bob Backlund, number five on your list of, of amateur yeah. turned pro. Let's get to number four. Who do you have? Brock Lesnar. Brock Lesnar from Lesner. University wow. of Minnesota. I am surprised he's this low on yeah, the list. Yeah, University of Minnesota. He was a gopher alongside another one who would become a professional wrestler. And they were actually a tag team in developmental with Shelton Benjamin. He was one of his coaches at Minnesota before they both joined OVW. But Brock Lesnar... Let me say this. Brock Lesnar won an NCAA championship in 2000 in St. Louis. He beat West Ham from Iowa. Brock Lesnar's at Minnesota. He won the NCAA Division I National Wrestling Champion. He was in the 285-pound weight class. And from that, Brock got recruited into the WWE. Brock Lesnar was on top of the world. He was an amateur wrestler, and naturally he needs to go to the pros, right? This is his... it, it, It's true, and of course, obviously, we don't have to tell anybody about how successful he's been. I mean, he's been, I mean, I mean, he was the top in his class. I mean, he was a top WWE wrestler. He launched UFC into what it is today after beating Randy Couture in 2008, brought a new fan base to that sport. And, and do you think, I think that, you know, uh, the importance of doing this category, I think, is that I think, People, a lot of people grow up and they hear, oh, wrestling's fixed, Rex, wrestling's staged, as if somehow these people are not supreme athletes. Oh, they who are. Trained and, and learned and have actual skills. So yes. a list like this shows you that a lot of these guys do have their roots in uh, proper uh, competitive wrestling. Yeah. And, and obviously a guy like Brock Lesnar um, has had success, uh, not just here, but like you mentioned in yeah. the UFC, which there's no question that uh, this is the real deal. Yeah. These are guys, uh, they're not actors per se, they're showmen, yeah. but they are first and foremost athletes. Yeah. So let's get back to your list and let's go to number three. Who do you have Number there? three is Kurt Angle. Some people have him number one and we'll talk about that why in a second. He was at Pitt and he won uh, NWA Division One Wrestling Championships in the 275-pound weight class for... 1990-1992, uh, Kurt Angle was a great amateur, and naturally he would go to the United States Olympic team in 1996 uh, in the 275-pound weight class. He won the gold medal at the Olympics, which was a, an amazing accomplishment at that time, and from that, of course, when you have an Olympic gold medal, there are going to be wrestling companies after you, and then, of course, he ends up in WWE in Survivor Series 1999, and the rest, as we say, is history of Kurt. He won the WWE World Heavyweight Championship multiple times. Uh, he won the Impact Wrestling Championship multiple times. And I encourage, if you want to learn more about Kurt Angle, watch a movie. Well, not really Kurt Angle, but where he came from. I want you all to watch a movie called Foxcatcher. Uh, the wrestler that they were looking to train, the Schultzes at the time, was Kurt Angle. They were the team that was preparing him for the Olympics. And, of course, with John DuPont, and, and he was murdered, and Kurt Angle's reaction. You can learn more about his story at the movie Foxcatcher. With Steve and, Carell, he was up for an Oscar. Yeah, he for was that. playing the antagonist John Dupont over Mark Ruffalo, I believe, who played Dave Schultz, the protagonist in the film. And it was it was good. You hear a lot about the Schultzes and their and their. I foot. have to be honest when you when I hear that you talk about a guy being a gold medalist at the Olympics, it is difficult for me to imagine that he's only three on your list. So yeah. I'm very curious who number two is on your yeah. list, and of course, even more curious who number one is. Yeah. Let's go to number two and, yeah. and talk through number two a little bit. Would be Jack Briscoe. Uh, he was he was the first Native American to win a NCAA Division One National Championship at 191 pounds. He's at Oklahoma State University. Uh, Jack Briscoe was great. The St. Louis Wrestling Club, I encourage everyone to go to Wrestling at the Chase on the Impact Wrestling Network. You can watch great tapes of this. Jack Briscoe was an, a National Wrestling Alliance World Heavyweight Champion. Jack Briscoe had a great tag team with Gerald Briscoe, the Briscoe brothers, and he was, 
to me, he was one of the greatest amateur wrestlers of all time and, you know, was one of the greatest professional wrestling champions ever at the NWA. I mean, he was touring all over the country. And when you think of wrestling champions, Jack Briscoe has to emerge at the at the top of the list. What time period are we talking about? Uh, it would be early. It would be about 73 through 75 when he was a champion in, in wrestling, but he for professional wrestling, an amateur, he won in 1965. So... Jack Briscoe had a phenomenal wrestling career. He worked a lot, you know, tag team with his brother Jerry, and 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 he was a really good wrestler. You you can't keep him off the list. You know, I, I'll say, you know, I, I'm not as familiar with him, but that that was a time period where where professional heavyweight boxing, uh, especially the heavyweights, people followed that really closely yes. uh, because of Muhammad Ali and and Joe Frazier yeah. and George Foreman yeah. during that time period uh, and, and, from the mid '60s yeah. to the mid '70s. Boxing was still the, the sport. physical sport, and and so I think Jack Briscoe maybe gets a little overlooked, Partly. and and then really something changed along the way. I mean, boxing still remained popular, but there was a time when everybody in this country could tell you who the heavyweight and, champion and, and was. And we'll, I'm ta- let's talk about that a little bit. This is important with amateur wrestling too. Boxing, I mean, nobody. I mean, boxing is not outdrawn. You know, wrestling and MMA for any of their pay per view events, and probably since. Rumble in the Jungle with Foreman and Ali. I mean, re- I mean, boxing, the momentum lost it in boxing, and a lot of it went to wrestling, professional wrestling. Then, of course, MMA came into it a lot later. I, I, see, and you I, had... I feel like what happened was Mike Tyson was the last sort of electric Boxer. champion. Yeah. And, and when he would be a champion, he was so aggressive. Yeah. He'd knock out so many guys in the first couple of and rounds. Here's, and here's, I think that set the stage right. here's for a part people's of that. expectations here's a part for the of that. UFC. Right. Well, here's a part. Here's what, here's why we're going to dive into that. Because that was in the late 80s. When boxing pay-per-views were against wrestling pay-per-views, nobody's paying. I mean, boxing, it was losing it because the, the Tyson's fights were short. And why am I going to go watch, you know, a short Tyson fight when I can go watch WrestleMania? And then eventually... When the cable providers stopped giving these pay per views away, the, the 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 dwindling went down of boxing and wrestling, and then of course later on MMA took it over. And he, I mean, ESPN well, MMA has like, a lot of short fights, but they give you a lot of them. Right, and they give you a lot of them. So and boxing, you, you, you it's don't just expect one. just to see one. Right, boxing is one, and I think that was always the magic of WrestleMania. And I know that yeah. we'll, we'll do a show another day ranking the best WrestleManias, yeah. but. Uh, I think that's the key is people want to see a, a, a show, a whole show. Yeah, they want to see a card from top to bottom. Great of, of matches. I don't want to just see one match. I can go go over and see 10 matches. And that was the thing. And Ali, right. of course, crossed over into wrestling when he did a match right. with Antonio Noki. And he it's was true, but you know, Ali's fights were always long. He gave yes. you your money's worth. And he gave you your money's worth. Not that's... always. I mean, he obviously had some early uh, yeah. knockouts. But I mean, the big ones you yeah. think about. The and he understood Manila, more than Rumble in the Jungle. Right. I mean, he gave you your money's worth. Yeah. But uh, but since Tyson, there really hasn't been anybody in boxing that's captured, that that's transcended the sport to where everybody knows their name. Yeah, I mean, you can say. Whereas in wrestling, I think there's a lot of guys that even for people that don't watch wrestling, they, they know. they've heard of. Everybody yeah. knows The Rock. Everybody knows John Cena. A lot of people have transcended. Yeah, Roman Reigns. I mean, there's I mean, there's a no. lot. Anyway, let's get back to your list. Of You've course. given us the top uh, four, Two. yeah, uh, four. the bottom four of the top five. Just to recap, number five was Bob Backlund. Yes. Number four was Brock Lesnar. Yeah. Number, number three, three was Kurt, Kurt Angle. Angle. Number two was Jerry Briscoe. Jack Briscoe. Jack Briscoe. I'm sorry, his brother was Jerry. Yes. You know, you get him confused. Yeah, sure. Who is the number one amateur turned professional wrestler in the history of professional now his, wrestling? I'll say this: this fellow's professional wrestling career was nothing like the four above it, but his amateur wrestling career is better than any of the four I just named, except for Kurt Angle. And that is Danny Hodge. He just recently passed away. And the wrestling equivalent of the Heisman Trophy is named the Danny Hodge Trophy. I mean, how? why not him be number one? I mean, Danny Hodge won three national wrestling championships. He's never taken down his collegiate career. 1955, 1956, 1957, and 177 pound weight class. And Danny Hodge was one of the most talented amateur wrestlers the world has ever seen. He's one of the greatest Oklahoma Sooners and of course naturally you know after winning that you know you get a big contract you enter into the wrestling business making more money than you can ever dream of in your life and 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 Hodge you know he was never a professional wrestling champion or anything like that but when you come to when you're hot when the or when the award for the Heisman for college wrestling is named the Danny Hodge award you can't not make him number one no I mean there's a good argument there but let's talk about his professional career obviously he came a little early he did not get to wrestle yeah. during the Vince Jr. 
No, era. he was. Let, let's let's play let's play fascination yeah. a little bit. Let's play dream sequence. Sure. What do you think a professional career would have looked like for Danny Hodge if it had come during the the Vince Junior era? What what is what would his well career even be? in the Vince Senior era since he was you know early early mid fifties and by the sixties you know his wrestling. He was never a main eventer, and, and, and I mean, he, yeah, he was. He, I mean, he headlined a few matches. He's never a champion. Um, part of that, you know, things were changing, and and I think if he would have entered in a Vince Senior world, he would have had the Bob Ackland spot. He would have been the one that. That's, let's say that's this. true. I have no question about that. But what if he had come in during Vince Junior? I think he would. Would he have been a heel? Would he have been a I baby think, face? I mean, it would have been hard because when when would when, when Vince Junior would have been the Brock Lesnar era, then he probably would have been. But if Hulk Hogan era, he probably wouldn't have been. I mean, that's. Vince was moving away from the amateur wrestling umbrella with bringing in Hulk Hogan, but Brock Lesnar coming into the fold, maybe he would have entered back into the amateur wrestling umbrella and would have been the top guy there. So it would have been just different Vince Juniors and different guys. Are, are there any guys out there now who had a good amateur career and they just haven't done enough yet as a professional, but you think could and maybe make this list at some I point? Mean, I mean, you could see maybe a, a guy like Chad Gable or a guy like Dolph Ziggler or maybe a Jake Hager, Jack Swagger, or somebody that's still active in professional wrestling that wrestled amateurly, or Shelton Benjamin from Minnesota. There are a lot of guys that are still professional wrestling that had great amateur wrestling careers that maybe one day they can maybe emerge on this list. But the, the list is there because they were, you know, except for Hodge, were all professional wrestling champions and amateur wrestling champions. Well, there you have it, folks. You know, this is you're gonna. That's what you're gonna learn during this podcast. It's gonna deepen your knowledge about uh, the history of this stuff, and it's yeah. gonna try to put some perspective on how you compare different eras, because each era is a little bit different, but they still have the same thing in common, and that's a lot of a lot of entertainment and a lot of uh, tremendous athleticism. Yeah. Uh, anyway, if you disagree with the list, if you think Kurt Angle should have been number one. Uh, which maybe I I may think that way, but that again, it's his list. It's not mine. Uh, but let us know in the comments or send an email to Brody at Brody, B-R-O-D-Y, at theinsanebrain.com. Once again, I am blown away by how much you know about these guys. I mean, to know where they went to college and what things they won back then, it's, yeah. it's that's why he's called the insane brain, folks. I mean, it's it's as simple as that. Anyway, thanks for tuning in. If you have not yet subscribed, subscribe to our channel or to our podcast. Tell your friends about it. Watch the other episodes. We try to keep these lean and fast so that you can binge a bunch and become a real expert uh, in the area. In the meantime, thank you for tuning in, and we will see you next time. Yeah.